Good morning. Welcome to, what is it? Oh yeah, I'm tired. Page Turning Tuesdays with Tom. We're continuing on the first chapter. We're still camping. One of the things that's fun to do when you go camping is as you get back in touch with mother nature is to pick berries. There's elderberries, there's huckleberries, there's dingleberries. Camping, getting a little grungy here. All right, let's dive back in. <clears throat> I'm introduced to a woman named Tree. She's draped in a thin white robe like the one worn by the actress in the It's Not Nice to Fool Mother Nature margarine commercials. Unfortunately, the dress leaves undesirable parts of her body exposed, like her armpits, which look like they're occupied by twin ferrets. Tree is an odd choice. Why tree? I am of the opinion that tree is not an acceptable human name, no matter how many you hug. She's definitely going out on a limb with that one. Ha ha. I'm sure she has a beautiful story of how it came to be. Name changes are fairly common these days, even in our family. But still, tree? Maybe she'll marry a leaf and have a kid named Woody that she can bark at. There's one table for food and another table for drugs. Sly opens a violin case filled with all kinds of them. People place their booze, pills, joints, bottles, mushrooms, hash, and other drugs in and all around the case for all to enjoy. Our Thanksgiving is a cornucopia of narcotics. Somebody made a tent card by ripping the cover off a book of matches and folding it in half. Then they stuck a pin to it, pointing upwards. They placed a dice-sized chunk of hash at the top of the tip, lit it on fire, and are taking hits from the bottom of the glass that's trapping the smoke. Others are sharing the same bowl from a giant hookah that has four lines springing from its base. I notice the mirrors built into the bathroom countertops. How weird, I think to myself. Rich people like to look at themselves at unusual angles. When I mention the mirrors to Claire, she laughs in my face. Those are for snorting cocaine, you imbecile. As the meal ends, people pick up instruments and we're treated to a musical show. Sly moves effortlessly from drums to keyboards to vocals, jamming with other musicians and singers. People clap their hands, tap their feet, bob their heads and dance. It's a real party. Chris is in musical heaven. We're all buzzed, full and happy. I go to use the bathroom and on my way out, I run into an elderly woman. Hello, I'm everybody's fairy godmother, including yours, she says. She begins waving a wand with a star on the end over my head. When I start to ask her a question, she shushes me and closes her eyes, then recites something in a language I've never heard because she's making it up on the spot. She reaches into a cloth satchel tied to her waist and sprinkles me with glitter. She's clearly tripping on drugs, and I'm polite, so I play along, pretending to be deeply impressed with wide-eyed wonder. Don't keep your dreams a secret, she says. Shout them out loud for the world to hear. Blow your wildest dreams into bubbles and then let them catch air. Put the universe to work for you. Do these things and every day, behold, the world is yours. She's spinning away from me dramatically now. Good talk, I say to myself as she disappears. I realize I have glitter in my mouth. I hate having glitter in my mouth. I can't figure out who the angelic naked child belongs to. She keeps disappearing and reappearing scratching the rosy mosquito bites on her butt. Everyone is genuinely digging each other's company, and I'm loving the people, the laughter, the food, the family, the drugs, the chaos, and the interesting distractions. It feels like our families have doubled in size. Thanks to Peggy, we're part of the in crowd. As long as I have people who really know me and really love me, I'll never be alone. And then, like a needle scratching across a record, everything suddenly stops and everything changes. That sense of connection and belonging that was just taking root is ripped away. Oh, I really hate to interrupt, Tom, but this is probably a good time to stop, Dr. Robin says. I open my eyes to find her looking right at me and then glancing at her watch. Oh, <clears throat> right, I've been rambling and half expected a two-minute warning or something. This has been great. You've done a lot. You have a lot of insight regarding your family. It felt good to talk. It usually does. I'd really like to continue your memory of this event in our next meeting. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thank you. See you next week. Yep, have a good week. I stand, stretch, and leave her office. Then I open and close the annoying-sounding front door and start the short walk towards work, still coaxing myself back into the present. So that's the end of the first chapter. 
And in the next uh, reading, we'll pick up with chapter two. Thanks for turning, tuning in again today. I promise to wake up shortly. Bye-bye.